In this video, we're going to review the generator controller on your Aurora generator. This Dynagen controller's job is to provide instrumentation, protection, and control. For instrumentation, just about everything you need to know on your generator and how it's functioning can be seen on this display. Even when you don't monitor your generator, the controller is monitoring the generator for you, ensuring that it operates safely and within pre-programmed parameters. For control, it knows when to crank or stop cranking, when to turn on the fuel pump, when to charge the battery, when to turn on cold starting aids, such as glow plugs, for example. Aurora Generators has pre-programmed this controller, so it'll work with your specific generator. So please be careful not to make changes you are not familiar with. You cannot enter some menus without a passcode. It's to protect the programming. By default, the passcode for others is 0000, four zeros. For Aurora generators, we change it to the last four digits of the controller's serial number. So to find your passcode, do the following. Press off to stop the generator and take it out of automatic mode if it was. Press Enter to open up the first menu options. Scroll down to Device Info and press Enter. Scroll down to About TG410 or TG350, depending on the model you have. Here you will find the serial number on the third line, SN, and in this case it ends in 0082. If this was your generator, your passcode would be 0082. On this generator, we left it as 0000 because it's a demo unit and it's easier for us to enter the passcode. Remember these last four digits on your display. Now that we have the passcode, we can exit by pressing enter. And we can back out of the menu, back, and we're back to where we started. One of the first things you may see in, is this message, not in auto, start enabled, in an amber light. That's a warning indicator. It's just a reminder that you did not leave the generator in automatic mode so that it will not start automatically. It's not an auto, but start is enabled. You can manually start the generator. So if you have a transfer switch connected and you want it to turn on automatically when the power fails, you need to put it back in automatic mode. Now it says waiting to start. And it's waiting for a signal from your transfer switch to tell it to start the generator. When it's in automatic mode, it will cycle through different displays, different, different uh, uh, bits of information. You can stop it by locking the screen, by pressing enter, locking the screen, and now manually cycle through what information is available when the generator is not running. When the generator is running, you can also cycle through the displays, but it'll show you more information. I can press enter again to unlock the screen or lock the screen. Again, it's in automatic mode and it's waiting to start. The warning or amber light has gone away and everything is normal. You could look at the generator one day and there's a message that says service required. It doesn't mean your generator is broken, that it needs service. It's just a timer that we use to remind you after 250 hours to change the oil. Many generators can go much longer without an oil change, but in this example, let's assume the message says service required. So to change the oil, or let's say you change the oil already and you want the generator to ignore it, or you want to reset this timer and keep on running. Here's what you do. First of all, press off. Anytime you want to get into the menu, a deeper menu, you have to press off so the generator cannot be running. You want to press menu or get into your menu, excuse me, go down to timers, press enter, and here it asks for your passcode. Hopefully you've written it down from the beginning of this video. But in this case, it's going to be four zeros. If I arrow up, if I keep going, numbers will increase and decrease. If I arrow down, I'm zero. 
0, 0, 0. Now it opens up a whole series of menus I did not have access to before. If I go down to maintenance, press enter, there is reset counter. That's the counter that was responsible for telling us service was required. I can reset the counter by pressing enter. It wants to make sure that I select yes and enter. And now I'm done, it's reset it, I can back out. If I want to disable the counter, I can select disable or enable, depending what's highlighted here. Right now, it's currently set at enable. There's a little green check mark there, but I can disable it. I just disabled it, and if I press enter, it'll take me back out. Let's restore it to what it was. Enable counter, enable, with a check mark, enter again, I'm out of it. Now I can change the interval. I said before that some generators can go longer periods of time without an oil change. We set it to 250 hours, but if you want to change yours, increase it or decrease it, this is where you do it by going up and down, pressing enter. Check mark, it's accepted it, enter again to get out of that. That's all you have to do. For now, the basic functions you should be concerned about is making sure that the generator is in auto. Let's get out of this menu first. That the generator is in auto or off to put it in manual mode, and then you can start it manually without waiting for your transfer switch. You'll see a few things happen here. Preheating, don't put a load on the generator yet. It's actually turning on glow plugs to preheat the engine, and then it'll crank. When the generator goes to start, a few things will also happen. You might even notice the battery voltage drop uh, because it's putting quite a load on the battery. It may even show you a little warning that uh, the battery voltage is dropped, but you can ignore that. It's not a critical error that will shut the engine off, but it will warn you, uh, it might warn you for a moment that the battery voltage has dropped. Again, now that the engine is running, it's going through different, um, um, showing you different parameters on here. And depending on your generator and the model of controller, it'll show you different bits of information. You can set how often the screen changes, or you can just press enter to lock the screen. Little lock symbol there. Now I can manually go up or down through the different displays and see what's going on. My power factor, apparent power, doesn't mean much to most people. Engine temperature, how much power is on the jet load on the generator, oil pressure, engine speed, battery voltage, AC frequency, how long the, is the engine running this time, what's the total number of hours on the engine, the generator voltage between line one to neutral or A to B, A to neutral, B to neutral, how much current, if you have current transformers, an option for your generator to monitor the load. It'll show you how much load you're drawing off the generator. Um, power factor, apparent power, real power, some of these we've seen already. I can unlock the screen again and just let it be. If the engine, I'm going to turn this off here, just press the off button, it's going through the shutdown process. If the engine does not start, and it's programmed to try two more times. Once it is running, you can see a few different things on the display like I just showed you. You don't have to monitor the controller. The controller is monitoring the generator for you and will shut the engine off if there's a critical error or just warn you if something appears abnormal. If you'd like to see what happened while you were away, there is a log of information you can view. First, do what I did, turn the engine off, press menu, and then you'll see events history. It's now showing to exit from this menu, press enter, enter to exit. It's event number one of 92 recorded events. It says off was enabled. Somebody pressed off at 1.25 p.m. on December 30th. And then before that, the engine was started. That was us, 1.23 p.m. December 30th. You can go back, 92 events on this particular log, and see if there was a problem while you were away. Did the generator shut off because it was over speed or under speed, over or under voltage or frequency? Did, it, uh, you, did you have low oil pressure? Uh, did it overheat? Is there anything you should be concerned about? It'll show up in the log here, and it's very helpful to know what happened while you were away.
perhaps the power failed and the generator started and stopped and everything's returned back to normal, you'll also be able to see that here. So in this particular case, it's 192 events. Um, on this controller, I'm looking at event number two. There's event number one. There's really nothing I'm concerned about right now. It all looks normal. I'm going to press enter to exit. I'm going to exit again. It's warning me I am not in automatic. I'm going to put it back in auto. It's waiting to start now. The light will go out. Everything's back to normal. We'll cover some more features of this controller in the next video.